So they had uh, Schwinn in the mid lane, but he's actually their ADC sub when he played. I believe it was Varus. But this time, this guy does play mid. He is the official sub. Yeah, and that is Puong in the mid lane. Spirits Nidalee being banned away as we are getting into picks and ban. So far, everything's looking identical. Interestingly enough, Vici with first pick. They see Callista's been banned. Oh, they banned Sivir, and then Callista was banned. Okay, so that, that was the order of things. They decide, Endless, you know, you did well on it, but let's let's see how well you do on something else. Sivir is a fantastic <laughs> champion for the LPL. She has an absurd win rate, 81% yeah. uh, pick rate. So glad to start seeing champion or teams ban that one out, kind of broaden the horizons. Uh, Nidalee banned, not surprised to see that. Again, all time, Spirit is 9-1, in one, including the Demacia Cup on that champion. You have to take it away from him. Yeah, and there is going to be Shea's LeBlanc banned away. Callista again taken from Endless and Mata's Alistar gone. That leaves Nautilus still on the board. And here's the question for WE. Was World 6 Gragas, World 6's Gragas, ban worthy? I would say definitely, especially because Vici do have the first pick. It would be very easy to prioritize a jungle oh, pickup, but it's going to be Brad. Yes, Brad <laughs> banned away from Mata. It's identical bans out of WE, and I believe those are also identical bans from Vici. Don't quote me on that. And we're getting into the next one. Here is the thing. Rek'Sai, Gragas, they are still all priority. Yeah, the so Twani's still up too. Exactly. The holy trinity of junglers left open. I would still prioritize Gragas just because he has the reset potential. He has the hard engage potential. Very tanky. Incredibly useful late game, especially because Sivir's not there as far as hard engage. Ooh. But they don't go any direction. Yes. They go for the Hecarim. I like the Hecarim. Dandy's Hecarim is a force to be reckoned with. Just... Very curious, especially because Sivir is banned, and Sivir has such great synergy with Hecarim because obviously her on the hunt is going to give him increased damage as well as that much more of a threat as far as a hard engage. But I mean, again, the Holy Trinity of Junglers is available. It's not like you're pigeonholed and Gragas was banned, Rek'Sai is banned, so you know, I must take Sejuani or I must take Nunu. Yeah, it is very exciting to see how that's going to work out. Now Spirit looking at Gragas to take that away from World 6, but the rest, the remaining two members, the Father and the Son, are still available in that holy trinity of junglers. Uh, Nautilus now being looked at. That's going to be Conan securing that. Mata not allowed that Nautilus. Sejuani immediately hovered by World 6. Rek'Sai, I think, would be much safer. Yeah. Now, the, well, the thing that I'm, I'm um, concerned about is that with Sejuani, typically you would like to do a lane swap, not only because um, obviously I think lane swaps are, are very strong because yeah. it's much more about pushing down those towers and kind of ramping up your mid game earlier because you're getting a surplus of gold, but to hide Sejuani in a lane swap because obviously if you're doing vertical jungling, you have a numbers advantage on at least one side of the map so you can keep her safe because the thing about Sejuani, especially as she is locked in, is that her first initial clear is very brittle, very fragile, and someone like Gragas, like Rek'Sai, like Lee Le Sin can just walk into her jungle and kill her instantly. Yeah, and that is actually going to be World 6 opting for that Sejuani and Puhang opting for Azir. I really like what Vici are doing. They said, you know what? We can play the rotation-based style. We've got World 6 now in the roster, which is uh, even more of a compliment to that rotation style. But let's take a look at Puhang. Let's experiment a little bit. Try things. Let's try a 5v5 composition because yeah. that's what they're set up to do. The big wombo combo is already there with the uh, Onslaught of Shadows as well as the Glacial Prism. On the other side, Shie locks the tried and true favorite in Ari. Mm -hmm. I, I'm an Ari player, so... Everyone's an Ari Shie player. Shie's got me one. <laughs> I'm on his side. It's a big signature champion for him, LeBlanc and Ari. Now, the thing about Ari is any matchup you take her into, except for maybe old Vigar, is going to be a skill-based matchup. Um, she, I mean... Azir is still going to outrange her with the Sand Soldiers, but it's not the worst case scenario when the Emperor's Divide comes out, just because she's going to have her ultimate that she's able to get around that. Mm -hmm. And the very mobile AD caster Lucian locked in for Mystic to complement that high mobility Ari in the mid lane. Hopefully he will be able to dodge that Glacial Prison or the Onslaught of Shadows from Dandy, who is sure to be in the back line if his previous performance on Fizz was any indicator. Last pickup for Endless is going to be Vayne and Mata on that job. I will be shocked if they look for a 2v2. That said, I actually don't think the Vayne, Janna into Lucian matchup is uh, that awful, but the Lucian Nautilus certainly puts it over yeah. the edge. That's probably the strongest 2v2 that you could possibly get, other than maybe a Callista, because her level two power spike is pretty disgusting with Rend. Um, 
But I would be, like I said, I would yeah. be shocked if they didn't look for a lane swap to isolate Vayne, get her onto that free farm, and likewise to hide World 6 away and allow Sejuani to kind of safely farm into her big power spike level 6 when she gets that Glacial Prism. Mm -hmm. And a bit of an interesting now uh, team comp built out for Vici Gaming as they are opting for that team fight based composition. They know they're a rotational team. They have that as their set identity. They're the most rotation focused team in the LPL, but they're going for a team fight team this time. Will they be able to make it work? And it's really going to hinge on their mid lane sub, Huang. Mm -hmm. He is playing the Azir. They do have the Vayne on their side, and it's really just about the zone control. Can he get a good Emperor's Divide? Can he get to these objectives on time to set up his Sand Soldiers to create v room for Vayne to run wild? Mm -hmm. And on the other side, WE opting for a similar composition to last time. This time, though, they've got a lot more mobility to deal with the heavy engage and sort of pick style that we saw out of Vici this last time around. And they did steal away that Gragas from World 6. And I'm sure uh, WE are scratching their heads just as much as the rest of us saying, who is this guy? Where did he come from? How can we possibly deal with this? So it'll be exciting to see how this one works out. Well, we do know who Spirit is. We do know where he comes well, from. Guy, yeah. <laughs> and everything that he's able to put out. Yes. And he's got the Gragas this time around. Yes. And obviously last time Spirit got cut short because he wasn't able to make the high impact on Lee Sin. See if he can do it this time on Gragas. Yeah, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on Spirit this time around. But we're going to get right into game. All right, we're right back into it. It's Vici Gaming versus WE, and we are on the Rift. Five-point defensive line out of just about everyone. That's actually four-point defensive line, as most of these guys are stacking up. It's Vici Gaming versus World Elite. Wait, uh, Vici Gaming won game number one. That's not what my scoreboard says. Yes. So, yeah, we're getting into game number two. Vici Gaming took game number one, WE looking for a bit of redemption after that first match, and they've got a pretty solid team comp. And we've got we've had two O's all night. Now, the thing that I want to talk about, we talked about a lane swap. This is the classic swippy swappy. As the swippy swappy. The swippy swappy. So what you do is you line up in a standard five point. It's called the five point because you are standing at all five entrances of the jungle. It effectively acts as a safety net as far as the level one, so you can see exactly what the enemy team is doing. You show up, you make sure that the enemy team's bot lane sees you hanging out there, either placing a ward or just being spotted out by their ward place. Then you sneak a back away into Fog of War, press back, and then run to the top side of the map. And mm. there's the lane swap. That's exactly it. Vici Gaming sending that very scary Vayne Janna towards the top, morely to avoid the Lucian Nautilus death combo that you talked about in the bottom. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, you've got Ari versus Azir and Aluka opting for the jungle start. He's going to go with Krugs. And Dandy, knowing he's got the lane swap, is just going to double jungle with World 6 for just a bit. We talked about this before. It's going to isolate Vayne, allow her to get that um, passive farm so she can get to her big power spike at level 6 as well as avoid Lucian and Nautilus. But more importantly, it's going to keep World 6 safe. And we'll be able to see if he's going to put as big numbers as he did the first game on the Sejuani. He certainly has the ultimate to do it, Glacial Prism. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how he performs on this Sejuani this time around. Oh, that's interesting. The invade coming out from Mata spots the naked red buff of WE as Aluka. He's headed down towards the bottom. Spirit going for the slow clear, slow clear as he goes for the dire wolves afterwards. And look at this, World 6 and Dandy, they decide to forget about their blue buff. They go for the invade. They're going to invade the red. They're about to get three buffed is what's going to happen. Now, this is actually fairly common for the supports to leave uh, the lane and kind of check on things to figure out where the enemy team is, which buff they started. Uh, Mata seeing that red buff, it's just a great adaptation of saying, you know, they haven't taken this yet. We have the three buff potential. Let's immediately rotate up here. Yeah, and WE respond by going for the invade of their own. They see now that the red buff was started by World 6 and Dandy. Instead, they opt to steal away the Krugs, swing down to the bottom to get some pressure onto that tier two turret while the rest of Vici Gaming clear out the remaining jungle of WE on the top side of the map. There's the vertical jungling that we were talking about earlier. Dandy in World 6 spotted out by that ward. I hope none of them smite it. Oh, man. Pops the Raptor Camp. My personal favorite, as opposed to warding the uh, Raptor Camp itself, is to actually ward on the pillar behind the red buff, because mm -hmm. then they can't find the ward, but it immediately procs the Raptor Camp. Oh, yeah, because it's still in range. That's exactly. right. Exactly. And then Ooh. you see them search around, like, where is it? So frantically for it. It is going to be WE going for the Dragon first, so I guess that's the trade-off. 
three buff for Vici Dragon. And this WE. is uh, entirely textbook. Typically, when you initiate the lane swap, you send your numbers advantage for the top side. You know that you're going to be sacrificing the early dragon. There's no problem there. They have the hyperscaling ADC. They chose to do freeze. It's really just about denying the CS into the tower right now or into the other creep wave. So. Vici are perfectly fine making that trade. Yeah, and they're feeling awful comfortable with it right now, though hopefully they will start to look to some of those dragons later on as a team fight team really benefits from some of those dragon stats. Most importantly, the first one, the third, and the fifth. You mean all of them? Yeah. Okay. Just, well, I, I was just checking. I mean, there's there's less priority on the second and fourth because as a team fight team, you look to take objectives off the back set of fights, right? Well, they also need to be able to do damage to towers or extra damage to towers because Vayne has yeah. zero siege potential. I mean, she has it. She can hit the tower, but it's very scary. Yeah, compared to someone like Lucian, it just is not going to be fun. Now, Dandy is making it to the bottom with Mata. He's even got World 6 for some backup, so there's not going to be any sort of dive shenanigans going on down there. And right now, things are looking pretty happy for Vici Gaming. They've got Dandy level 3. He's in that solo lane 1v2. He's absorbing experience. He's absorbing creeps. Aluka, on the other hand, is a bit slow to the uptake. Now, we want to talk about power spikes because this is perfectly fine. This is where Vici want to be. They want to be in this elongated lane phase. So. Lucian's going to find his big power spike kind of in the mid game. He's in more of an AD caster, although there's a lot of versatility in kind of new Lucian builds that he can not be a hyper carry late game, but he'll do great damage late game, especially if he decides to go like an infinity edge into a static shiv. Um, or if he wants a true mid game power spike and go for the Yomo's goose, bla uh, goose Blade. The Yomo's Goose Blade, yes. The classic Yomo's Goose Blade. The Ghost Blade. <laughs> Likewise on the other side. So it's about prioritizing your Vayne farm, making sure that she gets an easy route into the late game. But Dandy and how effective Hecarim is going to be with little or no farm, because he's uh, right now duo with Matsa's Janna, versus Fizz. And Fizz making sure that he gets that easy 1v1 and he's able to scale up fast. And that's really the big difference that we've seen between WE and VG right now. It's the 21 CS to 7. That is three times the farm going to Dandy. Yeah, it is still very early in the game, however. So there is a lot of opportunity for Luka to catch right back up. Right now, you've got Endless going for some free farm. Spirit's caught out by World 6. Teleport comes coming teleport. in from the side. And the Charm Dash comes out. He gets the kill. Shie, first blood, killing World 6. Aluka is now engaging upon Endless. Endless, who's forced to flash away. They're trying to get the kill onto Aluka as Dandy has joined the battle, but he just doesn't have any combat stats. He cannot do enough damage. Pyong doing some damage now to Aluka, but it's going to be a clean first blood by World Elite. She immediately gets the ultimate. What does he do? He runs top and burns it to assist on the first blood and take it back to his lane. So mm -hmm. great roam from Shie. We'll see if this power spike is going to affect the mid lane for Hatong there on that Azir. Yeah, and that's World Elite feeling awful strong. They've got that first dragon. Now they've got first blood as well. So Mystic put some pressure onto Mata to try to get some free damage onto this tier two. It's just after tier one. It's just after seven minutes. So the reduced damage has now fallen off. And World Six comes to soak some creeps and get some experience. Again, it's trying to get Sejuani into that level six so they can yeah. look for those big skirmishes like that. You talked about the brutal jungle of World Six and of Sejuani. Excuse me. And that's exactly what we saw. Brittle. Very squishy early game. Weak early levels. And a bit of punishment. Hmm. Shie decided that with his first blood, he's going to translate it into the Fiendish Codex, so going for the CDR, but then upgrade his boots very quickly. And this makes sense because, again, it's about clearing the Sand Soldier range from... Azir. Mm. So by having the upgraded level two boots, not only is he going to be able to roam more, which gave him that first blood in the first place, so he's going to be able to dodge more of that damage quickly. Yeah, very solid choice from Shie as he is up in CS. He's got first blood for his team, and he was rather instrumental in his team's survival or failure in game number one with his Emperor Divide, Emperor's Divide on Azir. This time, however, he's playing a much more mobile, much more signature uh, champion. Signature champion. We'll have to keep an eye on how he's able to translate that into the late game as it seems like we're finally back to the standard 1v1 in the top lane, 2v2 in the bottom. Speaking of top lane, take a look at that CS. 43 to 12. This is yeah. not where Luka wants to be. And unfortunately for WE, this is kind of where they had their problems uh, in the previous days for this week. They put a Luka on more of a carry-oriented champion. Fizz and Aurelia is what he played last time. And... Just he couldn't stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Mm. And that's what we're starting to see this time now is Aluka 
falling further and further behind. The shield is going to protect the turret in the bottom. Could be a potential dive as Spirit is waiting in the wings. The ward comes out a bit late. They don't know that Spirit's there. Now they spot him out. He's level six with explosive cask. Endless decides to back away with Mata. Especially oh, they even saw the run with Shie. Yeah, I was going to say, especially because they know that Shie is standing in the wings, not going to try to chance that one, and the tower is very low. WE just going to let a few more creeps die. Mm -hmm before they finish that one off. Yeah, the turret falls. That's the first turret, first kill, and first dragon in WE's favor. If we were following raw statistics, then they've got this game in the bag. Unfortunately, raw statistics don't always translate into the outcome of the game. Well, it also helps that uh, a lot of these statistics, especially in the early game, are going to be directly impacted to how well your jungle is moving around the map. And the fact of the matter is, is they still have spirit in the jungle. Didn't look so hot last game, but still a fantastic player and definitely the, the yeah. front runner there for everything that's happened on the map. Yeah, and you mentioned last game, spirit would be the hinge on which WE have their success or failure. And so far this time, this game, he seems like he's feeling a lot more confident. He's found his stride and is successfully roaming across the map with some pretty significant roam presence. Conan even showing mid to try to get some action onto Puhong, but Puhong playing it safe and defensive isn't going to let any sort of silly shenanigans catch him. And it's a very skirmish-based team. We talked again about how World Elite, excuse me, WE have their failures a little bit. In a oh, here's zoo. Conan. There's going to be the depth charge. He makes it onto the turret. Ooh, she doesn't decide to go for the flash charm. Let's him go. But WE's composition is completely full of mobility. I mean, pretty much every single champion except for Nautilus, and he even has a stretch line. Oh my gosh, Dandy just solo killed Aluka. Aluka was like, you know what? I've got Spirit here. He can back me up. But Spirit getting a bit too deep in the tri bush doesn't make it in time. Dandy with the first kill for Vici. Aluka's failure is monopolizing Spirit's time, but it looks like a dive. Oh, the charm lands. Dandy takes some hits. This is Shie capitalizing on the lack of mobility from that Hecarim. He goes down. Spirit picks up the kill in the mid lane. Puhong manages to get a kill onto Mystic, who is caught out of position. Bit of an odd place for the AD carry to be, but he's dead. Puhong actually trades his life over as well. There's action all across the map. And this is something that you really need to look for pretty much in LPL games. As soon as they see where resources are allocated, it gives the green light to go crazy on the other side of the map. Mm -hmm. And with that, Vici, with the numbers advantage on the Dragon side, are not going to take it. Very interesting choice. They saw Conan on that side. Instead, they allow Endless to continue getting some CS and get closer and closer to that all-important late-game vein. Well, they, the thing that they're concerned about is they know that Aluka still has his teleport available, and they don't have any uh, vision denial onto the pit or know where wards could be set up there. So they don't want to chance it, knowing that WE could very well be on their way, and Aluka could definitely immediately teleport down there. So the threat of attempting to set up that dragon without the full 5v5, especially because the Glacial Prism is now able or available to them, was just too much. <laughs> And with that, we are now back into lane. Spirit actually on his blue side of the jungle. So it seems like this next dragon that has freshly respawned could be a very important objective for WE as they definitely have the capabilities for playing dragon number five with that first one secured. Though they wouldn't be at too much of a loss if they sacked that first dragon either. Moreover, it's about stalling Vici's late game team comp. Well, the question is always who's going to set up uh, better for the dragon. Now, the uh, advantage does go to WE, not only because they've made more successful plays in the early game. Oh, hold on, got to teleport. Yeah, here's the replay or of the mid fight. Replay. Mystic caught, taking some damage. And he's going to go down Puhong. Oh, the ignite goes down. He cleanses and even flashes, but Conan gets it. And while all this happens, yeah, the as we secured. were saying, WE had the advantage to set up for the Dragon. And, and what I was saying, it's not only because, of course, they had the lead making the first blood and getting an early gold lead that direction, but the fact of the matter is, is they had the bottom tower, and by having that creep wave push forward, it gave them more map control over the bottom side of the map. They created a pressure point. VG had to respond to it. And WE get the free Dragon. Yeah, it seems like we're having a bit of trouble on our observer end. But yeah, that was a very interesting rotation. WE were able to secure that second dragon for themselves. And with that, they are uh, looking to get closer and closer to that fifth dragon power spike. While as Vici, on the other hand, not really responding quite as well as they were in the first game. It seems like it's Vici who are the ones responding to the pushes of WE. Well, Vici right now have to be in a reactive seat just because they have a late game scaling composition. If you're thinking about everyone gets really tired about the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
the word is win conditions, but people yeah. are like, oh, it's just a buzzword that you're using. But it really is. Where is our team strong? Where do they? Uh, where do we need to act and win? And fortunately, Vici, they're just not there yet. The big kind of tipping point was going to be when they have the Glacial Prism and, and coming together as a 5v5, but that just hasn't been a stage set for them to do that yet, so they haven't pulled the trigger. Whereas WE, they have the mid-game power spike, they have the roam and the early power of Ari and Lucian, and this is when they need to be acting to set up a snowball, set up these picks, so they can run past Vayne before she gets to her hyperscaling point. Yeah, we'll have to see if Vici can make it to that point. The roam from Endless, Mata, and Dandy, uh, I suppose that's more of a rotation than a roam, is going to find the top tier one turret undefended. However, they are sacrificing a lot of pressure onto that bottom tier one turret as well. Mystic getting some free damage across. This is some very valuable damage for WE. People don't usually consider Lucian a Siege champion. I mean, typically when you think about a Sieging ADC, you're thinking about Caitlyn or Jinx, someone like that. But Lucian's actually surprisingly really good at burning through towers simply because he can weave his double tap passive with his spells. So he just quickly chips away at towers. Oh, Collapse comes out. Dandy goes over the wall to look for a fight. He's not tanky enough, however. The Depth Charge finds Puhong. He's knocked right back in. Emperor's Divide tries to split them apart, but he doesn't have any backup. He's still on the front line. Finally, the Monsoon and Heal keeps him up. Endless has joined the battle, but this has turned into a full five versus five. Puhong dancing around the backside. He gets out alive. Endless pinned to the wall. No, he flashes to dodge it. Is he going to be able to get out of there alive? He's still standing there. Oh, the hook finally catches him. Charm for follow-up. Mystic gets the first kill of that incredibly chaotic team fight. And oh no, World 6. He tried to bank on that turret protecting him, but he was not able to. WE collapse. Another kill for Conan. And a big issue there was the cohesion for uh, Vici Gaming coming into the fight. The fact that Puhong pretty much was down and out before Vayne even got involved. The two carries high-fiving each other is, okay, my job's done. I threw all my abilities. Now you go in an attempt. And that just can't happen Ooh. for Vayne. Conan finds Dandy as he's running away. Aluka looking to catch up. Dandy doesn't have any sort of escape abilities, but instead he decides to rely on that mobility just casually runs away. Look at this horse. This horse is amazing. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, always, I want to be with you. Forever and ever. Is that the oh unicorn love. song? Oh, yes, it is. I see. Rainbow unicorn. Robot unicorn? Yes. Okay. Rainbow robot unicorn attack. I'm off with that game. Oh, man, it's so great. You, you got to get into the groove with the song, actually. Once you get in time with the music, I, th I think, and this is actually just total conjecture, that the blocks spawn in time with the music. So you just got to keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see my facial expression, but I assure you it's a good one. Yeah, it's pretty grand, pretty grand. But we're getting back into the game now. And uh, Dandy, he's doing pretty good right now. He's up 37 CS over Aluka. That's 38. Aluka has uh, shorted up a little bit, however. Yeah. I didn't mean, it doesn't necessarily really matter because Shie is being so impactful right now in this game. 1-0-3 mm. oh, with the completed Morella Namicon. Now he's got a needlessly large rod. We'll have to see whether or not he turns it into a Ludens as Dandy and World 6 look for a fight. They find Conan. He's got no flash. Conan is destroyed. It's Puhong who picks up the kill. You know what's really fun? Mm. The fact that Conan is really the only leftover piece of the former WE when they were called World Elite with uh, Wei Xiao. Now, obviously, Conan was the... Uh, What's the word I'm going to use? The replacement for FCZF when FCZF went off to EDG. <laughs> and frankly, Conan has never been really strong on his mechanics front, but his roaming was always really good on his Leona, and that's um, what he was known for other than a Velkos support. Mm -hmm. So it's just really funny to... Uh, after all of the changes, after everything has settled, and the roster is completely different, it's uh, probably the largest, long, longest-standing dynasty of League of Legends world elite, this team... And it's just Conan, the last That's guy standing. The Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> and we'll he died. We'll but. have to see if he can be the last Highlander this time. As Right now he's 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Looking for a bit more action as he was. Very mobile earlier. Finding that kill onto Dandy with the... Uh, not the kill, the actual team fight earlier. But now we've got GA clearing out some wards. Dragon looks like it's going to be the next big objective as the Vision War begins. Vision, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that you brought out the, the Vision War. It is very important to WE's composition just because she is kind of their big uh, big playmaker here right now. And 
pick potential is what's huge for them. Anytime you have an R, you have that charm, you can immediately delete someone off the map. And it's so much more important because you are facing a true wombo combo 5v5 on the other side of Vici Gaming. If the Onslaught of Shadows does connect with a beautiful Glacial Prism into a nice Emperor's Divide and Vade just runs three, uh, runs free, it really doesn't matter the gold deficit that WE have built up in their favor. I mean, that's just going to spell disaster for them. So it's so important that they get these flank boards out, that they're able to to set up to these objectives ahead of time so they have priority. Yeah, poorly timed recall from Buhong. He's going to find him on the back foot here. And with Buhong out of position, Vici cannot contest this dragon. WE take it. And that's going to put them at three to the zero I mean, for Vici Gaming. Simply sloppy. They have a 5v5 composition. They need to fight 5v5. And what better state to do that than every six minutes on a dragon? Um, big power spikes being hit. Morella Namcon has been finished for Puhong, and he's 500 gold away from that Zanya's Hourglass, getting closer and closer with every creep he kills. Dandy, meanwhile, completed his Cinder Hulk. He's got Home Guard. He's playing Hecarim right now, just sitting in the fountain, waiting. Oh, there he goes. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I always love doing that as Hecarim top, being like, guys, I'm playing Hecarim, and you just sit in the fountain, wait with Home Guard and teleport. So unfortunately, we didn't get to talk about Dandy's lane phase since he was in the uh, the 2v1. We still can't. Look at how excellent his lane phase is. 40 CS up over Luka. But a lot of that is dependent on the support and jungler's movements and how efficient. Yeah. But yes, he did uh, do fantastic in the lane swap. Obviously got very far ahead. That said, hasn't translated into a lead for Vici yet. Yeah. Kind of a big question mark. The dive comes out as they collapse onto the mid lane. Mystic is the target as Dandy and World 6 go a little bit too deep as Dandy goes low and is dropped. Mystic picks up a kill and then turns it into a double. He's looking super strong this game. Oh, the culling is going to find Mata, but decides to turn it to the minion wave. I mean, it's not much when your two tanks dive and the AD carry doesn't follow. Yeah. Minor miscommunication issues from Vici as both World 6 and Dandy were on the same page. That page was not the same page the team was on. Trades, two kills, and a tower in favor of WE. They are now making the rotation towards the top lane. It is the last standing outer tower, so it should be easy pickings, especially because they have a, uh, a wave prepped onto it. Yeah, they are swinging right on up there. Now Mystic is 4-1-1, one, and one, feeling exceptionally strong this match. This is actually beautiful. So a lot of teams would make a mistake that they would rotate everyone up into the top side tower, but the, uh, WE did the good job of making sure that Shie stays in the mid lane so there's no counter push or counter uh, response to look towards the mid tier tower. Now, WE are going to back off and not find that top tier tower, but I really like the... Uh the communication, I guess, from WE to make sure that they had all bases covered, that mm -hmm. they weren't just going to send five people up there and then have Vici rush down mid. Yeah, definitely looking a lot sharper than Vici as that miscommunicated dive did not work out. And in fact, the only kills that Vici have were off of the rotation-based pick from Dandy and Mata. And this is so classic from Vici. I feel like they keep splitting their series. One game they played to their strengths. It was a bit of an evolved or matured rotational style that we saw from the first time. The next game they try to play a 5v5 composition. Of course, they switch it up. They trade out their mid laner Hatong. But it's still not working for them. Yeah, it seems like they're having a bit of difficulty with this team fight composition. Mystic secures the red buff for himself as he is being fed awfully well. GA transitioning out of that early game carry roll to the late game carry as instead of a Luden's Echo opts for the Rabadon de Rabadon's death cap. And he's going to trust Mystic to be doing the majority of damage in these upcoming team fights. Or skirmishes, judging how WE are fighting. Well, speaking of upcoming team fights, I mean, really, Vici aren't setting them up for any sort of uh, team fight. What they continually are doing is moving in between their waves. So we just saw that uh, Endless up there pushed the wave forward, then immediately backed out, forced WE to make a rotation to clear out the creep wave. Now Dandy on the opposite side of the map is going to push it forward, and then I assume we'll either probably back up. Pings are going down to the tower. It is a last standing outer tower, so... Should be easy to take. Yeah, Spirit does find a pick on Tamata, however, while the rest of WE Siege top, and they secure that uh, top tier one turret, the last tier one turret of BG. And with this, Dandy isn't even able to clear out that last tier one turret in the bottom, actually the second for his team, while the rest of WE finds some good damage in the top lane. Hook lands, they find W6, World 6. Are they gonna dive him? He's brought awful low. Charm misses, Puong is the follow-up target. He's successfully managing to clear the creeps out of there, but Mystic just does so much damage. The turret falls and he pressures forward. 
before finally backing away. And this is why you don't walk in front of the enemy team. A nice hook from Conan right there. Pretty much ends that fight before it begins by chunking out World 6. Yeah, some huge damage coming across from WE with that siege. They've hit some really powerful spikes. And there's the Ether Whiffs from Shie. He is now finally building towards that Luden's Echo, but he already does so much damage. Mystic securing the Phantom Dancer means he's going to be able to shred through his targets even faster. Double Frozen Heart for the tanky Frontliners. If I didn't know any better, it could be a triple Frozen Heart if Conan picks one up too. I also want to touch again on map pressure. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's so wonderful that WE got the second tier top tower, especially as Dragon's about to spawn in, uh, in one minute. So you always have to think, whenever Dragon's up, that's the, the side of the map that the teams are going to be focusing on and playing towards. And by having uh, second tier tower, tower down on top side, it creates this massive pressure point because obviously without a tower there to stop the creep wave, the creep wave is going to get further down on that lane and it's going to split Vici, or Vici Gaming's resources. They're going to have to send someone constantly up into that top to deal with the wave and it should give WE another free tower, another numbers advantage to look for a free tower, or a free dragon, excuse me. WE putting some pressure now onto the map. They know they've got that wave building top and whoa, potential dive as they aggress forward. The charm finds Pong, Puong, but he instantly cleanses to get out of it. Great reaction to keep himself alive, but now that that cleanses down, WE have got the green light to start hitting up on that dragon. They just need to be patient and wait for Vici to make the move to the top lane, because either they're going to get massive damage from that creep wave onto the tower, or they're going to get the free dragon. Don't pull the trigger too quickly here. Oh, they set up a death push and immediately pull the trigger. Mata's knocked back in. Mystic destroys him. Great Glacial Prison is going to lock Mystic down, but there's no follow-up. Dandy dives into the back line and is removed from the map. Shie and Conan, meanwhile, going 1v, 2v3 and successfully stalling it out with two members dead. WE have got the whole world as their oyster. Does end up okay. That said, I was going to say, they should just be patient, wait for Vichy to make the move. They do find a pick, though, <laughs> with a nice play on Vision. We talked about how they had pick potential in their composition, so nicely played in a great teleport from WE, especially as a Lucas. Kind of checking out what World 6 is doing. Yeah, he's just keeping an eye on World 6. He's got Smite. Does even have his uh, Chum the Water, so he could look to go for a very unique solo play, but instead decides to let World 6 secure his Gromp camp. And with that, that's the fourth dragon for World Elite. Which means that this opens up a very easy Baron as they will do bonus damage to monsters. Is it minions and monsters? Rar. Oh my gosh. They played earlier today, actually. I'm just really, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was really concerned about that team fight there because if that had gone wrong, that would have swung momentum like crazy. Mm -hmm. That was really risky from WE to pull the trigger there. It really was. But they ended up pulling it out rather well. I, I mean, know, Mystic but there was no reason to. Mata. Hmm. It seemed like it worked out. It did. It worked out. They played it beautifully. It's now about the Baron again. Dragon's down. They can pick up their vision, move it to the top side of the map. Baron's going to be the next big objective, especially because they've been getting dragons so early. We're at the fourth Dragon buff at 26 minutes into the game. Yeah, WE are looking so strong. This is completely different than the WE we saw in game number one. And Vici right now are dancing to the beat of WE's drum. They're actually starting the Baron here. Recall coming out from Dandy. He wants There's to get the Home Guard teleport. Pick coming out from Shie. Is he going to be able to make it there in time? He gets into the pit, but the Baron is secured. Immediately knocked out. WE collapse and destroy Dandy. Dashing around the Emperor's Divide to chase it with a follow-up fight. Spirit looking for some kills on the Puhong. He gets the explosive cast. Meanwhile, Aluka going ham with Shie. They're going two versus three here. There's going to be a great knockup to set, separate them from the fight. Mata flashes to run for his life. There is going to be the knockup. Shie secures the kill with the Luka. This is WE cleaning this game up. They are on maximum janitorial duty right now. They've got four kills. Baron, four dragons, and this is WE looking exceptionally strong. Endless. Ah, oh, they let him go. Chaos across the map. Again, not a cohesive 5v5. Everyone for themselves. You've got two people running up to the top side of the map, two people running into the mid lane. It works out for them, but primarily because that Emperor's Divide, Vici on completely different wavelengths. Dandy comes in with the Home Guard teleport, and he's immediately locked off into the Baron pit because Pong uh, puts out of the Emperor's Divide to, to escape. Yeah, very confusing sort of play from Vici. It seems like Dandy Unique. Yeah, Dandy and World 6 are like, all right, we've got a 5v5 team fight, team comp oriented team. Let's team fight. And then Puhong, Endless, and Mata are like, wait, what's a team fight? 
and it's not really working out so well. As you can see, 13,000 gold in favor of WE. They take down that mid inhibitor. They have now got the complete map in control with a fresh Baron buff circling around their uh, ankles. They're ankles. feeling pretty strong. Are, is, is that the ankle? I guess that's like the waist. It's like for, the hip. Yeah. It's like a hula hoop. Or for like Fizz, it's uh, actually a necklace. Okay, so what WE are setting up to do right now is I think that they should apply their Baron in uh, all lanes, mm -hmm. which is why we now, well, Shia was going to the top lane. Oh, Glacial Prison is going to find Conan. He's brought low. He's still alive, however. Finally, he's going to go down, but he's traded over for two kills. as endless World 6. Now, Puhung has fallen as well. Dandy is collapsed upon. He wants revenge. He is going to get it with that challenging smite, but that's an ace. WE trade two kills for an ace. The mid inhibitor is down. They could be looking to end the game. And this is one of the terrifying things about if Azir is caught out of position, he needs to get his sand soldiers up and ready so he can maximize his damage output. But constantly getting caught out, throwing down panic emperors of the divide and not being that hyper carry that this mage needs them to be, especially for a vein composition. He's so important to creating space for endless to run for it. And Frankly, Vici have just been caught with their pants down. Yeah, the two Nexus turrets go low. They're not able to finish off the last one. The super minion, oh, gets it. The Nexus is now the target for WE, but they decide to back away, play it safe. They don't want to throw this game as they are getting closer and closer towards that scary late game vein. Well, it's more but so the fact that they just took all of those structural objectives as well as the kills. So they oh, yeah. need to back right now, spin the gold that they have, Fifth dragon's on the table for them, so oh, yeah. they're going to take that easy. Yeah, Ward's now covering that side of the map. WE in complete control of this game. They're even setting up a death push. They know that Dragon 5 has to be contested by Vici. They don't need Dragon 5. If they can get a few picks, if they can get a few kills, they can rush right down onto that naked Nexus and take that thing down. The Thirst. The Thirst is real. They're creeping forward. They're going to find World 6. He's going to be locked down after a stellar performance in Game 1. It will be his death. That catalyzes their loss in game number two. WE dash forward. Xie looks for a pick onto Pang, but Pang Puong is able to use the Emperor's Divide and split the rest of the team fight. 5v4. WE with Baron Buff fully healed up. They're trying to go forward. You do have a great Nexus defense turret, but that's not a standard one. Dandy dives in the back. Mystic is still alive, however. Dandy runs away. Oh, they got to focus on finishing the game. Mystic is so low. That's a huge key ultimate, though, especially for their engage. Oh, and now they dive onto Endless. He's dropped down. GA, even with the exhaust, is able to finish him off. Dandy from the backside gets knocked right back into Mystic. He's down. Two members are dead, but that turret is still standing. This is WE now just styling on Vici Gaming. Monsoon for a bit of a split, but they pick up the kill onto Puhong. World 6 makes it back onto the fountain, but this is five members of WE. The fake Nexus turret falls, and WE get onto the Nexus. They're going to take the win and split the series with Vici Gaming one-to-one. -one. WE thrive in chaos. Their skirmish comp works out for them, playing to their strengths.